So today, I'm going to kind of touch base on a video that I made a while back, which was um, basically just a few snapshots of me um, doing like a, a thermal mod for the Nintendo Switch. In that video, I specifically state that this voids your warranty. It's not necessary because the Switch does not overheat. Um, I simply did it because I was curious. Really, that's it. Just because I was curious to see what exactly was inside the Switch. I know I can you know, watch videos and stuff like that on it. But I wanted to um, see for myself and see if I could uh, do anything to... Um, to help aid in the uh, the um, thermal di uh, dissipation. Um, in this video here, basically, uh, I'm just taking the switch back apart, um, taking all the screws out of the back. I'm not gonna go over in detail how to do all that. I skipped through a bunch of it. But the reason I wanted to record me uh, taking it apart here is because you're going to see some of the mods that I had done back in that video and I'm going to go over what they are, and I'm also going to do a few more modifications um, this time. Um, so here you can see uh, there's a couple thermal pads. Uh, you'll see in a second, I'll bring it up here. Um, there's two thermal pads where the memory uh, modules are, and then there's some uh, thermal paste um, there where the, um, where the uh, heat pipe is. Um, when you take the switch apart without any modifications, there's thermal paste there uh, connecting the heat pipe to the metal back panel. Um, that just helps draw more heat away from that heat pipe uh, without even using the fan. I'm just cleaning up some of the uh, thermal paste that was there from the uh, last time I did the modification. Here's the um, thermal pads that I put on there from last time. Uh, it's their thin thermal pads, and um, that's where the thermal paste used to be anyway. So I just replaced it with a thermal pad. Uh, it's cleaner that way. When you take off the uh, heat sink, take it off in a triangular pattern so you have kind of like even torque on the, um, on the die. Uh, that's probably even more important to do that if you've removed the shim. Um, because you have, you know, the, the metal connecting directly to that, uh, that die, which is basically glass. Here you can see the die and the uh, memory modules there that I have the thermal pads on. Those thermal pads may actually be too thick, so I'm going to remove them shortly. But you can see the little heat sink with the heat pipe here, and then the little, uh, the die there. I'll have a picture of the, um, the dye in a second. I'm going to clean off the thermal paste so I can reapply it here in a second. And here is the, uh, the dye. Uh, that's where the copper shim was. You can kind of see the little arrows where the copper shim used to, to go out to, but I, again, I removed that little, it's just a very thin little sticker. Um, reapplying the thermal paste, because this is a, um, a direct contact with the dye, you want to make sure you spread the thermal paste I'm using Arctic Silver 5. You want to make sure you spread the thermal paste all over it. You don't want to do it like you do it on a processor or CPU where you just put a glob in the middle and let the weight you know, press it around. Um, you need to make sure that it's spread to all corners because this is not a shim. Um, this is the direct die. Uh, so once you do that, you can put this back together here. And here I, I removed the thermal pads I had. They were a little too thick. Um, 
these are more appropriate. I didn't have these last time I did it. Uh, so I just kind of made sure I have all the, uh, you know, appropriate thicknesses now for it so that it doesn't press out too much on the back uh, metal panel. Um, it was doing that a little bit before, but now it's completely flush. Um, you don't even see any bulge or anything like that. It's everything is touching um, perfectly at the right, um, the right height. Now again, thermally, none of that is really necessary. One thing that I did find um, kind of interesting is uh, after I did the thermal mod, um, where I you know reapplied the paste and added appropriate thicknesses for the uh, thermal pads, uh, I loaded up Zelda and I went to a few places um, that I can sometimes run into stutter, like you know there that's it's raining, the lightning. Here, there's, you know, pretty big draw distances, a lot of things going on. Um, the worst spot by far is um, the forest area, which I'm going to right now. I almost always can get it to stutter or lag a little bit right around where the Master Sword is, if you just kind of pan the camera around. Um, I could not at all. Now, this is, just do this is just handheld. I didn't test it docked. But... I could not make it stutter at all. I don't know if it's just because thermally it's a little bit cooler, so it's able to hold the clocks more stably. Um, I don't know. But ultimately, um, I'm going to show here in a second. I actually have the, a new back panel on, which I cut a little hole out in so it can get uh, some more air in. Again, unnecessary. You don't need to do this. I just do it because I wanted to. But here you can see there's a little hole right there where the fan is, so it can just suck fresh air in right into the uh, right into the fan there. And that's it. Bye.